would, open your Bibles to Romans chapter 1. <clears throat> Romans chapter 1, and verse 16, a familiar verse. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul states, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. <clears throat> If you continue reading in Romans chapter 1, Paul goes on to explain why the world needs that powerful message of the gospel. He says in verse 18 that the wrath of God <clears throat> is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. <clears throat> and in the following verses, Paul describes the sad history of mankind who willingly rejected God <clears throat> And he points out that no one can claim ignorance. He says that the very nature and power of God can be seen through his creation. But man chose to reject that truth. And we can see the result of man choosing to reject that truth. The result is that God gave them up to, to vile passions and to a debased mind. And in verse 32, Paul says that God will judge those who practice wickedness and that they are deserving of death. And then if you turn to Chapter 2, Paul redirects his thoughts towards people who think of themselves as righteous. And these are people that are judging other people for being in sin. And yet, these people are involved in the exact same sins. And it's possible that Paul is specifically addressing an attitude among Jewish Christians. And he calls them out as hypocrites. In chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, he says... <clears throat> Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge. For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. We know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. <clears throat> and do you think this, O man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? For a Jew who became a Christian, there might be the, the temptation to have a sense of entitlement and to think that God will overlook their sins just because they're part of the nation of Israel. But Paul says here that if you're judging other people for living in sin, and yet you're living in sin yourself, then you're also subject to God's judgment. And he asks the rhetorical question in verse 3, you actually think you'll escape the judgment of God. <clears throat> And then in verse 4, Paul makes an interesting statement that I want to focus on tonight. In verse 4, the, the New King James Version says, Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? Here Paul is referring to people who knew the law of God, and they were judging other people for living in sin, and yet they continued in sin themselves. <clears throat> and Paul is suggesting here that those living this hypocritical lifestyle are showing an attitude that despises the goodness of God. <clears throat> By willfully ignoring the sin in their own lives, they are, in a sense, despising the goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering of God. Whenever we willfully reject God and choose to continue to live in sin, that's exactly the attitude that we display, whether we realize it or not. And when we despise the very nature of God that provides us with grace and mercy, then that leaves us in a very dangerous situation. I think there's a story in the Old Testament that, can, that helps illustrate this point. If you would turn to Genesis chapter 25. In Genesis 25 we have the story of Esau selling his birthright to Jacob. <clears throat> Chapter 25, beginning in verse 29. It says, Now Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in from the field, and he, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with the, that same red stew, for I am weary. <clears throat> 
Therefore his name was called Edom. But Jacob said, Sell me your birthright as of this day. And Esau said, Look, I'm about to die, so what is this birthright to me? Then Jacob said, Swear to me as of this day. <clears throat> so he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils, then he ate and drank, arose, and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. As the oldest of Isaac's sons, Esau would have inherited the birthright, which would probably mean he would have gained a double portion of his father's estate, and he would have had the right to exercise authority over his household. And this should have been a great honor for the firstborn son. <clears throat> And yet Esau was willing to give up that honor for nothing more than a bowl of stew. And I think it's interesting to note that in verse 34, it says that Esau despised his birthright. As Christians, sometimes we can act just as foolishly with our spiritual inheritance. Through Christ, we're blessed with an abundance of spiritual blessings. Through Christ, we can be reconciled to God and have access to him through prayer. Through Christ, we can put on the new man and be renewed by God's word. Through Christ, we can be added to his body, the church. Through Christ, we can have access to the grace of God and be forgiven of our sins. And through Christ, we can have hope of spending eternity in heaven with him one day. But so, so many times, Christians are, are willing to give up these spiritual blessings for the pleasures of this temporary world. And like Esau and like, the, like those mentioned in Romans chapter 2, when they do this, they show an attitude that despises God's goodness and the blessings that he has so graciously provided for us. <clears throat> in Hebrews chapter 12, the story of Esau selling his birthright is actually used as a warning for Christians and as an encouragement to avoid making that same mistake. In Hebrews chapter 12, beginning in verse 12, the Hebrew writer offers this encouragement. He says, Therefore strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with all people, and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance." though he sought it diligently with tears. What a sad statement about Esau we have here, and what a powerful warning to, to each one of us. When we continue in sin, willfully rejecting God, and following this world and its temporary pleasures, we are, in a sense, despising God's love, his patience, and his kindness toward us. And if we choose to continue to live in sin after becoming a Christian, then we've done something even much more foolish than Esau did. God is patient and long-suffering. But as we see in Romans chapter 1, God is also just and righteous. And he's promised to judge those who are disobedient. All of us sin and fall short of the glory of God. But let's be sure that we're not willfully continuing in sin and despising God's goodness. If we truly appreciate God's patience and his goodness, this should motivate us to repent when we sin. 2 Peter 3 and verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I put this talk together mainly to encourage those of us who are Christians to appreciate the spiritual blessings that we have in Christ, and to encourage us to, to not live in such a way that we are despising the goodness of God. But if you're here tonight and you've never put Christ on in baptism, 
then you can't really appreciate or even have access to those spiritual blessings. And if that's the case for you tonight, we want to encourage you to, to make that decision tonight. If you need to respond to the invitation in any way, we want to encourage you to come forward now as we stand and sing.